Okay, so what we're going to be doing today um, is taking uh, uh, the ad that we did uh, last week and we're going to push it forward and we're going to add some text to this and uh, body copy and make it actually look like a real ad. Um, <coughs> Uh, some of you may be thinking, okay, well, we're just going to go over to the uh, the type tool and we're going to put in some type and throw it, you know, right across here. We're going to go hit rocks. Oh, we're going to make this type really big and super cool and, and do it that way. Um, no, you're not going to do it this way. The reason why is because there are too many variables inside Photoshop uh, for things to go wrong and also because if you were to submit this to a um, a print agency in a f as a Photoshop file <coughs> well they would be kinda mad um, I can go into the reasons why but I won't because this is a tutorial for setting type and not for a tutorial for how to do things horribly wrong so what we're gonna do number one is just ignore this get rid of this this text thing um, text is, is fine to apply in Photoshop for special effects and that kind of stuff, but as far as doing it uh, on an ad-based level, um, setting type, um, body copy, that kind of stuff, best done at least in Illustrator or in InDesign or a layout program. Photoshop is just that. It is for manipulating images. It is not for setting type. Um, <coughs> and it's actually only since CS, uh, CS2, I believe, that the type features have um, progressed enough where you can actually do decent type styling in Photoshop, but there's still a long way to go. Um, so what we're going to do is first off, I am going to save this as an EPS. Why? Because when we're going to place this in Adobe Illustrator, um, you want to have something that will be easily printable. Uh, I can place this layered Photoshop file in Adobe Illustrator and it will look fine except that when I go to print it will uh, Illustrator will have to flatten all of this stuff out okay all the layers down here um, and it's and it does a pretty good job but it doesn't do as good as a job as Photoshop does and also all of these nice layer effects that you've worked so hard to put in um, may not come across exactly uh, as they would uh, as you were to flatten this into one file and save it as an EPS through Photoshop. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go here, we're going to go to Save As. Okay, I'm calling my ad. and I'm just going to save this to the desktop, my desktop of chaos as I like to call it. And uh, we're going to go down here to Save as Photoshop EPS. Down here, Use Proof Setup, Working CMYK. And basically, my color profile is set for U.S. sheet-fed coded. Um, now, this means this is basically sheet-fed is a type of printer. Uh, sheet-fed printers, much like your photocopiers or color copiers, where it's one sheet at a time, be it 8.5 by 11, 11 by 17, 24 by 36 inches in size, single sheets, um, as opposed to a web uh, printer, which is kind of like a newsprint, newspaper printer, which prints. Um, tons of, of copies off of a single spool. A um, whole of different ball of wax here, but we're going to use this color profile and CMYK usually defaults to uh, sheet fed. Uh, anyway, <coughs> just a little aside. So I'm going to save this, my add, and notice the suffix EPS on the end. Uh, that stands for encapsulated postscript. Um, I'm not going to get into that either. Uh, so basically we're going to save it as my add.eps, save to the desktop. Yahoo. Okay. Now, it's going to ask me for EPS options. If you're on a Mac side and you're working on a Mac based system, you want this. You know, Macintosh 8 bits per pixel. That's just giving you a color. Macintosh JPEG, don't use. Um, it doesn't separate out properly, it gives you trouble. If you're working on a PC based system, well, then you want the TIFF 8 bits pixel. That gives you color. TIFF 1 bit pixel gives you black and white. And Macintosh, 1-bit pixel, gives you black and white. So save as bad, 8 bits per pixel. And in the encoding, ASCII. Um, this stuff down here, if you don't know what it is, just leave it alone. Um, ASCII is the, um, the the language that it's encoded in. ASCII, I believe, is... Well, I'm not going to get into that because I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to um, 
you know, give anyone false information. Binary is zeros and ones, and I believe ASCII. I'm just going to say it anyway. Is uh, is uh, letters and nu numerics uh, thrown together, um, sort of like hexadecimal, but not. But that's a whole different ball of wax again. So we're just going to leave it like so. Everything is fine. We're just going to not touch anything. Go OK. So it's saving. Doing its fun thing. Now I'm going to flip out to. Hey, cool. Going to flip to Adobe Illustrator. Um, I'm going to make up a new file. Okay, I'm going to call this my ad. And you can basically set it for whatever file size you want. For example, there's defaults, print, okay, uh, web, etc., etc. I want to set it for print, okay. I need letter size, points. I prefer inches. So 8.5 by 11, that's the standard size. You can set it from, you know, uh, portrait to landscape. Mine's a vertical, it's portrait. CMYK, as we saved it before. And the raster effects high, it's 300 p uh, ppi. Just in case there's any special effects you put into uh, Illustrator, it's going to rasterize them out at high resolution. Okay, preview mode, default. Then go OK. Right on. Now we're getting somewhere. <coughs> so, what we see first off, actually, is the character palette. Now, it, this is all broken out and broken down um, in the uh, lecture that I gave uh, this week of, we'll go over here, Tuesday, November 25th, 2008. Um, basically, if you refer back to the PDF about typography, it gives you a breakdown about what each in one of these, every one of these little um, uh, menus and uh, information palettes uh, means. Uh, so basically, and also just a trick, if you go Apple T, Actually, I'm going to bring out my keyboard viewer just so you guys see what's going on. <coughs> if you do Apple T, that basically shows and hides the character palette, just so you guys know. Now, you can go here, okay, and you do get this stuff running across the top. Actually, I'm going to turn on my Omni Dazzle because it's really sweet to use. Dum -da -dum. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so, so you notice across the top, okay, same stuff as in the character palette. Uh, there are a little bit more options in the character palette. I prefer the character palette because it's movable, and I can move it wherever I go. And, of course, there's my tabs. I'm just going to drag that back in there. Boom. Um, this isn't, this is always there. So if I'm working in a very tight space, for example, and I zoom right in, I can always have this here. I can move it around, get it out of the way. This, I, personally, I just don't like this. And also, there's more stuff in here anyway. So that's just a personal thing. So <coughs> first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to place my EPS that I saved. So I'm going to go to File, Place. I am not going to drag it in. I am not going to copy and paste it in. I'm going to place it in. The reason why I'm placing it in is because if I choose to make any changes to that EPS, say my type is I want to do some cool special effects to it, so I'm going to do some special effects to the type in in Photoshop, save it, and it will automatically update this image, my ad. It will automatically update this graphic to the most recent version, so I don't have to go in and copy and paste it, and what if something moves, and it just gets rid of a whole bunch of variables right off the start. And notice this button here, link. If this button's clicked off, and I place this image, this image is then embedded inside this Illustrator file. Um, not good practice to do unless you're giving to somebody and you want to make sure that they totally for sure get the file. Um, the reason why is because once this file is embedded, then of course if you were to make any changes to the to the Photoshop document, it would not be updated automatically. So, and also it makes the file size of the Illustrator document bigger, way bigger. So, it gets confusing, and it gets uh, file sizes and document sizes get big, huge, real quickly. Um, just another tip for you. So we're going to click on the link, we're going to go to place, pow. 
And then you go. <clears throat> now you see that, you know, don't be alarmed if you take a look at this this file and it's like, geez, man, this this quality, the image quality sucks. It's garbage. It's okay. Um, it's the preview for the DPS. 